UV stands for ultraviolet, which is a form of light that originates from both the sun and artificial means. It's used to sterilize air, liquids, and solids. It can harden certain adhesives and even detect biological fluid at crime scenes. It can also cause cancer. In this video, I'll explain the mechanism of how UV light causes cancer, whether it be from the sun or an artificial source. I also have a story from my previous job, where someone misused a UV light that ended with tragic consequences. This is Dark Science. You know that the best protection from UV rays is sunscreen, but did you know that today's sponsor, Aura, is the best protection against data brokers? If you've ever downloaded a third-party app, accepted browser cookies, or made an online purchase, yes, yes you have, then you're a prime target for data brokers. Data brokers use these sources to look up your personal info, like your home address, social security number, credit card number, really anything personal. Thankfully, Aura takes care of this. Aura alerts you to data brokers who are selling your sensitive information and stops them in the act. It also clears your spam folder and alerts you to suspicious activity. Don't take your data security for granted. I discovered the password I had been using for the last year was on the dark web. Fortunately, I was alerted and changed it before I became a victim. Don't let this happen to you. Aura protects your information with strong passwords, monitors your activity, and freezes credit cards in the event your data is compromised. If you value the safety of your data and want peace of mind, get Aura today. Go to Aura.com forward slash dark science to start a two-week free trial. Thanks to Aura for sponsoring this video. To understand how UV light can cause cancer, we first have to look at how it affects matter, specifically electrons. Electrons are negatively charged subatomic particles that form vibrating cloud-like orbits around atoms. When atoms form bonds with each other, it's the electrons that make up the actual bonds. However, for electrons to form these bonds, they must be energized. When they have sufficient energy, they vibrate faster and jump to an outer orbital, forming a covalent bond with another atom. Electrons can be energized in multiple ways. The most obvious is through heat or thermal energy. This can be from friction or a source that generates heat from a chemical reaction, such as a spark or flame. When alcohol is at room temperature, it does not ignite with oxygen in the air. This is because both are low in energy, and their electrons are vibrating too slow to jump to an outer orbital. However, if high thermal energy is introduced, such as heat from a lit match, electrons will be energized enough to jump to an outer shell and form bonds with adjacent atoms. With oxygen and hydrocarbons in close proximity, a combustion reaction ensues, yielding carbon dioxide and water. Another way electrons can gain energy is from light. Light is made up of subatomic particles called photons. When photons strike an electron, it becomes energized and vibrates faster. You can observe this when you touch the hood of a car on a hot sunny day. Photons from the sunlight strike electrons in metal atoms of the hood and energize them. Electrons vibrate faster and generate friction. This increases thermal energy, making the hood hot. Now, this may sound a little odd, but in addition to existing as a particle, light also behaves like a wave. This is known as wave-particle duality and is too complex to cover in this video, so you'll just have to take it at face value. Since light behaves as a wave, it's measured in wavelengths, with an amplitude and time. However, light is not made up of a single wavelength, but rather several wavelengths, depending on its level of energy. The more energy a wave has, the shorter the wavelength and the less energy, the longer the wavelength, very similar to battle ropes. The different wavelengths of light is called the electromagnetic spectrum, and has gamma rays with the most energy and radio waves with the least. The light we see from the sun, light bulbs, fire, and LEDs is visible light, and is not very high energy. Its wavelengths are between 380 and 700 nanometers. When photons in visible light strike an electron, it energizes it enough to vibrate faster, but not enough to jump to an outer shell and form bonds. Gamma rays, on the other hand, are extremely high energy, and have wavelengths from one millionth of a nanometer to 0.1 nanometers. When photons from gamma rays strike electrons, they become so energized that they're stripped off the atom entirely. This changes the atom into a positively charged ion. 
is there anything between gamma rays and visible light that energizes electrons enough that doesn't rip them off the atom, but can form bonds? X-rays are ionizing radiation like gamma rays, so that's a no. However, UV has just enough energy to form bonds. UV radiation has a wavelength between 100 nanometers and 400 nanometers. A wavelength of 100 nanometers of UV light is enough to ionize atoms, but UV radiation from the sun is non-ionizing, so we're not exposed to it. However, UV light between 120 nanometers and 400 nanometers is non-ionizing, and does have enough energy to make electrons form bonds. But UV light doesn't excite just any electrons to form bonds. It's not like you can shine UV light onto a lump of carbon and it will react with oxygen to form carbon dioxide. The electrons have to be part of a molecular structure that absorbs UV radiation to hold on to the energy. Two molecules that absorb UV light in this capacity are thymine and cytosine. Thymine and cytosine are also nucleotides in your DNA, along with adenine and guanine. When photons from UV light strike thymine or cytosine, Electrons at the double bonds become energized. Now that thymine and cytosine have enough energy, they can form bonds with other molecules. Adenine and guanine don't have a conducive structure to absorb UV light and form bonds. However, if a thymine is adjacent to another thymine, they will form bonds with each other. This is known as crosslinking and forms a thymine dimer. The same goes for adjacent cytosines. However, thymine dimers are much more common than cytosine and will therefore be covered exclusively. When adjacent thymines form bonds with each other, it's called crosslinking, and this new molecule is called a thymine dimer. Dimers are a problem for your DNA because they form a kink in the DNA helix. This prevents the DNA from being replicated properly when enzymes copy it during mitosis. The enzyme that copies DNA, called DNA polymerase, needs a flat surface to copy nucleotides. When it approaches this kink, it cannot continue, and replication halts. When this happens, a process called translesion synthesis occurs, where the kink is removed and the right nucleotide is inserted. With the kink filled in, the DNA is copied. But there is a small problem. Translesion synthesis can sometimes put the wrong nucleotide in place, making a different DNA strand from the original. This becomes a major problem when the DNA is used to make protein. DNA is used as a guide to assemble amino acids into protein. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein. Proteins are essential for the body as they take on many different roles. Some are used as cell structures, enzymes, receptors, and even messengers. In a DNA strand, every three nucleotides code for an amino acid. If the DNA sequence for some reason is wrong, then the incorrect amino acids will be made, and the protein won't function properly. Even just one wrong amino acid can render a protein non-functional. Depending on what the protein is used for, this can be detrimental. For instance, say there is a protein that acts as an enzyme, and this enzyme is responsible for breaking down toxins in a cell. If this protein becomes non-functional due to an incorrect amino acid, then it cannot break down toxins. The toxins build up in the cell, causing it to shut down. This is why UV light is used to sterilize water and dirty surfaces. It mutates bacterial DNA so it can't replicate, and proteins can't function. Bacteria can't survive nor reproduce, thereby sterilizing the environment. So how does this relate to cancer? Say there is a protein that is responsible for targeting cancer cells for destruction. If this protein becomes non-functional from a DNA mutation, this could spell danger for the body. This chink in the anti-cancer mechanisms would allow a cancerous cell to sneak by unnoticed, reproduce, and spread. For cancer, all it takes is just one cell. In case you're wondering, this is how UV light can cause cancer. For example, say there is a messenger protein that binds to cells, that tells them to stop dividing. If UV light causes a mutation in the DNA sequence that makes this messenger protein, then it will make the protein incorrectly. Say the protein now has a different shape. It cannot bind to the receptor to stop reproduction and the cell continues to divide, creating a cancerous growth. This is just one of many ways mutations can cause disruption in cancer prevention. Since your skin is directly exposed to sunlight, the most common type of cancer you get from UV light is melanoma. Melanocytes are the cells in your skin that produce melanin, giving it its color. When melanocytes become cancerous, it's called melanoma. 
Fortunately, your body has mechanisms that notice and repair thymine dimers before it gets out of hand. One repair mechanism is to cut out the cross-linked dimers using an enzyme called human nucleotide excision nuclease, or HNEN. After being removed, other enzymes fill in the correct nucleotides and seal the DNA strand. Another prevention mechanism is called apoptosis. In apoptosis, when a cell realizes it has mutated DNA, it will intentionally destroy itself. This is to prevent the cell from replicating and passing on its faulty DNA. These mechanisms are very accurate and operate all the time. In fact, your body resolves DNA damage in roughly 60 million cells in your body every single day. Despite the accuracy of anti-cancer mechanisms, people still get cancer. This is often due to multiple factors that reintroduce mutations at a high rate. This could be due to inheriting genes that predispose them to cancer, decades of poor diet, and long-term exposure to high amounts of carcinogens, like smoking, alcohol, and radiation. Don't let this video scare you into never going outside ever again. It's not as hazardous as you may think. Firstly, 95% of UV light from the sun is absorbed by the ozone layer in our atmosphere. The 5% that does get through can still cause damage to DNA. Make sure that you wear sunscreen on very sunny days or in hot climates. If you don't have access to sunscreen, try wearing a long sleeve t-shirt or find some shade. The CDC recommends staying in the sun unprotected for no more than 15 minutes. If you must be outside, you need to have some kind of protection. As promised at the beginning of the video, here's my story about fatal UV exposure. Several years ago, I used to work in a protein research lab. In the lab next door to mine was a dissection lab that did antibody testing using antigens from mouse organs. The lab needed fresh tissue for experiments and would harvest organs from mice on site. If you've ever seen or worked in a dissection lab, you know it gets very dirty and is a breeding ground for bacteria and disease. For this reason, the dissection area was sequestered from the rest of the lab in a 10 foot by 15 foot room. To ensure every inch of the room was sterilized, a large UV light was installed above the work area. At the end of the day, workers would wipe down the bench as best they could and then leave the room. There was a switch on the outside that activated the UV light for sterilization. This was a precaution, so people would be out of the room when the light was on. The protocol was to lock the door and then leave the light on for 5 minutes. Since this lab had very expensive equipment and government contracts, there was a security guard who watched the facility overnight. There had been one security guard for several years and he retired, so a new one was hired. Before the older guard retired, he trained the new security guard. Apparently, he never told the new guard to stay out of the dissection room because it was always locked and had never crossed his mind. A couple of weeks onto the job, the new guard did his rounds as normal. On one cold winter night, he just happened to wander into the dissection lab. He had all the keys to the facility and unlocked the door and walked in, but couldn't find a light switch. He did see a light switch on the outside and turned it on. The room lit up in a violet haze. There was a warning sign on the outside of the dissection room that said not to turn on the UV light before entering. Unfortunately, he paid no attention to it. The guard noticed this light was very warm, and having been hired during the winter time, he was a bit cold, and decided to warm up. He soon made it a habit of taking short naps under the UV light in between his rounds. This went on for several weeks until an employee came into work early, and was horrified to find him asleep in the dissection room with the UV light beaming right down on him. The employee quickly turned off the light and screamed at the guard in utter terror. The incident was reported to the safety officer, and the guard was fired after a brief investigation. Afterwards, everyone, including security guards, had to undergo safety training and learn proper use of the UV light. A few years later, the security guard that was fired was diagnosed with melanoma and had several health complications. The cancer spread to the rest of his body, and he succumbed to it not long after. UV light is a useful tool that provides many benefits such as sterilization, scanning for body fluids at crime scenes, and hardening adhesives. It can also be very hazardous to your health if precautions are not taken. You don't have to sleep under a sterilizing lamp to be exposed to UV radiation. It's all around us, from sunrise to sunset. So make sure you're protected. Thanks for watching Dark Science.